Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice here at the Everyday Counts program space. Please remember I'm only here to make suggestions. You can move any way you need to move. This practice can feel any way it needs to feel. You're all gonna press pause to skip ahead, to move freely. This is your time on your mat. So let's begin by making ourselves comfortable. I thought today we might start lying down, but you're welcome to remain seated upright in a chair, on a cushion, uh, whatever you need or you might lie down. If it's comfortable for you to lie on your back here, um, but the low back feels a little bit uncomfortable with the legs long, you could bend your knees, take the feet kind of wide, turn the toes in, and then rest your knees against each other. And that sometimes allows for a more comfortable reclined position. Uh, the hands could rest on the belly or maybe out to the sides. You might close your eyes and begin to breathe through your nose if you can. Allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive, to kind of feel your body landing here on your mat, on the floor. Even acknowledging that gentle support beneath you, acknowledging that you are fully supported and held here, just as you are. You might feel the downward pull of gravity helping you to feel rooted and secure. The gift of gravity is a feeling of stillness and connection where your body touches down. A stillness and connection that allows you to feel rooted and supported so that you can let go and be held. And from this place of stillness, of connection, let's begin to notice the movement of the breath. Again, if it helps, you could bring hands to your belly here. As we inhale, inviting the belly to soften and expand with the in-breath. Exhale, and the belly slowly falls. And this is a gentle in-breath. Soft, relaxed out-breath. what I'd call an effortless breath. We simply invite the belly to soften and expand with the inhale. To gently fall with that slow exhale. And this is a relaxation breath pattern. Deep inhale, slower exhale helping us to land here in the present moment, perhaps a little more comfortably, a little more at ease. So let's offer three or four more breaths to this pose. Here we are now. If it suits you, perhaps rest a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest. Feel the weight and warmth of your own giving hands. And offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you.
and slowly releasing those hands. Let's see if there's a yawn or a stretch here, or even a pretend stretch of the arms overhead. And then let those arms rest wherever they naturally can, overhead. We're gonna separate those knees, or if the legs are long, bend the knees, bringing the feet to the edges of the mat. We'll allow both knees to fall to one side. And then the other. We keep uh, adjusting how wide the feet are, how bent the knees are, so you can find your own path of least resistance here. As we move slowly, maybe noticing any sensation of stretch at one side or the other. So I'm gonna add a little bit of a stretch here. Let's meet with our knees at center. And now allow both knees to fall to the right. They can stay there. And now we're gonna stretch through the left side. So you're gonna stretch your left fingertips, your left arm overhead. You're also gonna stretch your left kneecap away from you. You could press that left foot into the mat a little bit as you squeeze your left butt. Sort of let it peel off the mat. And then let that release. And we'll try this a few more times. So the knees are gonna to float to center. And now the knees fall to the left, we're stretching right. So we're gonna squeeze the right butt a little bit, let it peel off the mat. We're gonna stretch up through those right fingertips, press the right knee away from you as you press down through that right foot. Feel that stretch, feel that little bit of engagement. And then feel the release. The knees are gonna come back to center. Do that a couple more times either side. So as the knees fall to the right, we're gonna stretch left, squeeze the butt, push through the foot, stretch fingers away from you. And then release it. Other side, knees fall left, we're gonna stretch through the right, push the foot into the mat, squeeze the butt, stretch from fingertips to kneecap, feel it, stretch it, release. Once more, either side, knees are falling right, we're stretching through the left, we're engaging through the left, we're feeling it. That could be a big breath in. Exhale, let it go. The knees fall to the left and we're stretching right, push through the foot, squeeze through the butt, stretch. And release. Wonderful. We'll meet with the knees back at center. We'll rest the knees together. And let's bring our hands in front of us here. And we can interlace the fingers and just start to circle the wrists. Yeah, could be some cricks and cracks here. And then change direction. Yeah. We're going to separate the heels of the palms, but the hands are still interlaced. Let's see if we can do some waving movements here. Yeah. If there's a direction to the wave, you could change direction. You know, it's a bit curious to be doing these arm movements from reclined, but let's notice how it feels. We're going to come to stillness, turn the palms to face away, so fingers are still interlaced. Or press the arms to the ceiling. Let's press through the heel of one palm and then the other, seeing if we can feel a little movement through those shoulder blades. Pressing through the heel of one palm and then the other. Uh, press through the heels of both palms and let's sweep those arms overhead. Now they could rest right on the mat or they could hover a little bit. And again, we're gonna press through the heel of one palm and then the other. Just noticing how that feels. And we'll press evenly through both. And we'll float those arms out to the sides and back down by our sides. Yeah, take a moment here to rest, kind of feel those shoulders and arms releasing to the ground. And now we're gonna turn this into a bit of a flow. We're gonna sweep the arms out to the sides. 
until they reach overhead. We might press the palms together. And now we're gonna bring those pressing palms over the head, over to the chest, yeah. Let's interlace the fingers, press the arms up and overhead again. We release the hands, the arms float back out to the sides. And again, we rest. Let the arms be quiet and settle. Let's try that one more time. We're gonna sweep the arms out to the side. Overhead, palms press. Come down to the center of the chest. Interlace, press those hands away. Sweep the arms overhead. And back down to our sides. Yeah. Again, let the arms rest, maybe turn the palms up. And now we can separate those knees. So we're going to keep that left leg nice and quiet, just where it is. If you prefer to have the leg long, that's fine. Either way will do. We're going to focus on the right leg. So I want you to notice I'm lifting the ball of that right foot. Can you see that? So I've, I'm on the heel. The ball of the foot is lifted. I'm going to bring the knee out to the side. So it's on a bit of a diagonal, but it hasn't collapsed. It's just on a bit of a diagonal. We're going to straighten the leg. Now we're going to turn the toes to face in, so the kneecap turns in a little bit. We're going to drag the heel back. Bring the knee out to the side again, straighten. And turn the toes to point in, and drag it back. Now this might pull up on the um, mat a little bit, it might wrinkle the mat. We're going to try this two more rounds. Knee turns out, straighten, turn those toes in. Bend, and one more time, straighten, turn in, bend. So hopefully you're gonna feel those hip muscles gently awakening. So we're gonna change the direction. We're gonna turn the knee in, the toes in, as the leg is bent, and we're gonna straighten the leg. We're gonna turn the toes out, and bend. Again, turn the knee and the toes in, straighten, Toes out, bend. We'll do that a couple more times. Again, we're probably feeling a nice activation here in the hip joint. And back. All right, and then just as a little release here, let's keep both knees bent, walk the feet wide again, rock those knees from side to side. So we'll try that again. I'm gonna to move to the other end of my mat. So hopefully you can see this leg easily as we go through that same flow with our left leg. So I'm keeping the right knee comfortably bent or I can let that leg rest. We're focusing on the left knee. Notice I can lift the sole of the ball of my foot staying on the heel. I'm gonna bring the knee about halfway out to the side. So not collapsing there, it's active. And then slowly straighten the leg. I'm gonna turn the toes in and straighten. Again, knee, toes turn out, be straight. Turn the toes in, bend. Do that a couple more times. Slow as you need to go. And then we'll turn it around. Knee pointed in, toes pointed in, we straighten. Toes and knee out, we bend. You might even start to feel this in the core as that hip starts to warm up. Notice there's a bit of a pulling action here that keeps the core engaged. We'll do two more here. Knee in, toes in, straighten. Knee in, toes out. Pull. One more. And there we are. So again, we could bend the knees, feet wide, rock those knees. Yeah. So 
From here, let's lift one foot and then the other, pull the knees to the belly. We'll rock a bit from side to side. And then maybe circle both knees together, starting to invite some movement through the pelvis, kind of circling around the low back. The sacrum. Change the direction of your circle. And then coming back to center. Yeah. Let's roll over onto one side. Let's say the left side, perhaps. And as you roll over, um, you're gonna stack the hips, stack the knees. You could wedge a little pillow or blanket under your head, but your head's gonna be turning really soon and then I think it won't feel as awkward an angle. So you can let your head rest. We're gonna bring our hands to rest on top of our other hand. So you can just about see it. I'm gonna back up a bit. Yeah. Um, the knees are comfortably stacked. Yeah. So let's float the top arm up. And then we're turning the chest to the ceiling as we reach the arm behind. And we're kind of letting that top hip shift back as the belly and chest reach for the ceiling. And then we're going to bring the arm back across. And so we can go right across the body like this starting to let everything open and then close again. Or we could even sweep that top arm sort of up overhead, gliding along the floor, reaching behind us, and then gliding back around to come hand to hand. So you can choose whether you reach across the body or do more of a circular movement. I can't quite express it because my arm is hitting the wall here, but it's a nice full circle, yeah. And then you could change the direction of that circle. You could circle down and around. Again, we're letting that top hip shift. We're letting belly and chest turn to the ceiling. And then as we bring the hand back to the other hand, we've rolled back on our sides. We'll do that a couple more times. Noticing how it feels. And then we'll meet hand to hand. We'll take a breath here. And we're going to move into this on the other side. So you can simply roll yourself over. Or if you're me, you're going to come and bring your head to the other end of the mat. So I remain seen. Yeah, so again, we'll stack the hips, the shoulders, the hands. We'll float the top arm up. And we can turn belly and chest and head to the ceiling as we reach that arm behind us. That top hip can shift back. And then we'll reach back across, hand to hand, stack the shoulders and the hips. This is our open book twist, letting everything open. And back across, or we could turn this into more of a circular movement. We could sweep the arm overhead. It could even drift along the floor to open. And then down and back across the body to close. We'll try that a couple more times in this direction. Really being soft here as you reach that arm behind you. And then roll back to your side. So we could change direction, reaching down and across the body. And back across. Couple more, slow as you wanna go. You could close your eyes. And here we are now, hand to hand. We'll take a breath here. And now you could find your top hand, press it into the floor in front of you to guide yourself upright. So now we'll make our way to hands and knees, tabletop position. Support those knees with a pillow or a blanket as need be. 
and check in with the hands. Uh, let's start to rock the hips from side to side. Knowing you can come on to fists here, you could come on to forearms. We'll rock the hips over to one side. We'll circle back through child. Rock to the other side and forward. I'm starting to ease into those hips. At the same time, we're circling the knees, the shoulders, the wrists, pushing the ground away when the weight shifts forward. Let's circle a couple more times in this direction. And then maybe the next time the hips are moving towards the heels, we could change the direction. Lean over to that side, circle back around. what you feel. Two more circles here. And push the ground away. And then we'll meet at center. Shake out the hands if you need to. Let's move through our familiar cat cow for a few moments. So we're finding our neutral spine. Maybe that's an inhale. Exhaling, tuck that tailbone down, begin to slowly round. Inhale, turn the tailbone up, slowly out. You might close your eyes here, take your time, lead with the tailbone. Change direction with the tailbone. Notice how it feels to move in this way today. We do this movement in almost every practice together. And yet it's always new. This moment's always new. And a couple more either direction. If this was the only yoga you did in a day, just cat-cow, it would be enough. It'd be wonderful. It's such a gift for your spine. Returning to our neutral tabletop, we're going to press into a child pose by widening the knees and letting the hips drop back towards the heels. We might walk the arms long and rest the forehead between. Or if the forehead is lifted, we could bend our elbows and cross the forearms to rest the forehead or even stack the fists here. Let's come back to that soft, deep in-breath. And softer, slower out breath. Couple more. Wonderful. So we are going to return to our tabletop position. I like to play a little bit um, with some more twisting. And this seems complicated, but I promise it's not. You just might have to follow along with me. Uh, keep your eye on me for the first round here. So I'm pressing down through my left hand. I could be on a fist here. I'm going to hover the right fingertips and reach them out to the side. Let's reach the arm up. Now I'm gonna bring it down and I'm sending it behind my left arm. I'm gonna bend the left arm as I gently lower the right shoulder to the mat. It doesn't have to reach. I'm gonna press into that left hand to sweep the right arm back across and up. 
So we'll try that a few more times. We're reaching across. Bend that left elbow to let you twist and reach across the body. You can even tap the right shoulder if you wanted. And then press and reach back across. Yeah. Let's do that three more times. And we don't need to bend that left elbow. We could reach across the body like so and see how far we can reach. And then reach back across. A couple more. Reach across. Let your head and neck turn to the left. Press through the left arm to reach back up. Let's do one more. Reach across. Back up. And now we'll bring the hand back down. We'll widen the knees. We'll press into child pose. You might bend the right forearm to rest the forehead. You might circle that left wrist a bit. You could make a fist, spread the fingers wide. Just kind of give some love to that hardworking left hand as you find that soft, deep in-breath. And softer, slower out-breath. Couple more, just like that. Okay, let's return to our tabletop and we'll do it all again on the other side. So now the weight is on the right hand. Let's sweep the left arm out to the side. We're pressing down to reach up so the shoulders feel nice and spacious. We're gonna reach that left arm behind and through to the right as we bend the right elbow, letting that left shoulder maybe get close to the mat. We're going to push into that right hand to lift the left arm back up. So yes, this is bringing mobility to the spine as we twist, but this is also strengthening that right shoulder, that wrist, that arm. As we slowly bend that elbow as much as is comfortable, we're challenging it. Yeah. As we push the mat away and lift that arm high, we're inviting strength and stability. Let's do three more. And again, we could keep that right elbow straight if we wanted. We could still reach across and twist. And we could still open and press. A couple more. And notice how your breath is joining you here. And reach. And the hand comes down. Again, we'll press into child pose. This time we could bend the left elbow, rest the forehead on it. As we circle the right wrist or make a fist, spread the fingers wide a few times to invite blood flow and comfort into that right hand and we'll find the breath here soft and deep soft and slow okay let's return to our tabletop position and then we'll come to standing. So however you need to get to standing, feel free to use a wall or a chair. We slowly make our way to our mountain pose. Uh, notice if your feet feel comfortably under you. Uh, as we inhale, let's notice how tall we can become. Exhale, shoulders soft. A couple more breaths like that, tall. And soft. Wonderful. And so you probably know how much I like to attend to the lower legs before we get into some standing poses. So let's do that now. 
Um, you just rock a bit from foot to foot. Notice how it feels to shift the weight. A little softness to the knees here. And then as we come to stillness, let's rock onto the outer edges of the feet, lifting the inner edges. And then press into the inner edges, lifting the outer edges. We'll do that a few more times. Just using my hands to kind of denote that. Press into the outer edge, lift the inner edge. Press into the inner edge, lift the outer edge. You can probably see from this video that this movement's coming all the way up to my hips. My knees are shifting, my hips are shifting, but my feet have a lot to say. You can hear them, but probably your feet are saying similar things. Yeah. So let's do this a couple more times in either direction. It's a novel movement for the feet. And then we're going to let that go. Just walk the feet a little bit if you need to here. Yeah. From here, let's walk our hands down our thighs. We're going to bend the knees a bit and circle the knees. And we're really listening here. We're noticing we can shift the weight across the edges of the feet or around the edges. Or we can move into a lovely calf stretch as the knees shift forward. Listening to all of the sensations here below the knees. Circle a couple more times in this direction. And these don't need to be big circles. You still feel it. You're feeling it. You're doing it. And let's change the direction. Letting the weight of the hands be on the thighs so the upper body can be nice and quiet here. What do you feel? Speak. Speak. Speak to those feet, or at least listen to them. Those ankles, those calves, a couple more circles. Wonderful, okay, we're back to stillness, we're back to standing. Yeah. I'm gonna do one more set of movements. If you have a wall to hold onto or a chair, you're welcome to it, because we're gonna bring all the weight onto the left foot, lift the right heel, and a circle around the ball of that foot. change the direction. When our feet are in shoes, we miss out on all of this mobility and the sensitivity. So it's great in yoga to really give our feet a chance to stretch and to feel. Okay, so we're gonna tuck that foot behind. I'm on the tops of my toes now, like you're pointing your foot. And I'm gonna rock from baby toe to big toe. And this can be a pretty juicy stretch for the top of your foot. Yeah, just listening to the foot. Listen to the feet, kind of speaking to you in the form of sensation. They're so far from our head. It's such a gift to listen. Yeah, okay, let's release that foot. Let's take a moment here just to compare feet. So maybe closing your eyes. Can you feel the feet differently after moving them differently? Does that right foot have a little more to say? Or is it a little easier to listen? And now we'll switch. So when we're balancing on the right foot, we're lifting the left heel. We're circling around the ball of that foot. You don't need to lean on something if you don't need to. You can challenge your balance that way. Change the direction. And then we'll tuck that foot behind. We're on the tops of the toes, rocking from baby toe to big toe. This can be pretty sweet here. Juicy stretch. Great. Okay, bringing that foot down, just taking a moment here to get comfortable on those feet, feeling tall. And soft shoulders. So we'll be playing a little bit with high lunge. So again, if you've got a conveniently placed wall or chair that you want just to have as a hand, please feel free. We are gonna to come towards the front of our mat. 
And we're going to practice a little bit of stepping forward and back. So this is where if there's a chair you want to play with, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we're just keeping those knees nice and soft, kind of feeling close to the ground here. So I'm going to peel the right foot off my mat and just kind of drag it back. And see how it feels to find that upright lunge position. Yeah, you'll notice my back knee is bent under the hips. I'm really upright here. And then I'm going to shift the weight forward again. I'm going to step it back. So I'm actually just dragging that foot and back to standing. And again, I'm going to bend the knees. This is like a mini chair pose. I'm going to lift the left heel, step it back. I'm going to come back upright. And then try that again. So we're just going to play with that move. And it doesn't need to be a big step. And again, there could be support of a chair or a wall. Let's see if we can get the weight on both feet here. Notice my heel is lifted and my toes are pointed in the same direction. And I might feel like I'm on a tight rope and it just means I need to widen my base, I need to widen how far the feet are. So again, I'm gonna step, drag back, lift the left heel, step back. Again, heel is lifted, got some width here, wide base. And let's step forward. Let's try once more each foot. I know this can be challenging, so take a break. We can stand up. We so rarely step behind us. I bend the knees, lift the right heel, step back. Yeah. Step forward. Lift the left heel, step back. forward again. So let's take a little rest here. And this rest could be in the form of mountain pose or having a seat. Or you could walk your hands down your thighs, rest your forearms on your thighs, nice bent knees. Finding your breath here. Or you could even reach for the floor, rest your belly over your thighs, let your head hang if blood pressure permits. We'll rest here for three or four breaths. Again, wherever you need to be here, your head is down, maybe give your head a little shake, nod your head yes, turn your head no, wiggle those shoulders. About three more breaths, just wherever you need to be in this pose. Finding that relaxation breath pattern. And then let's bring our forearms back to our thighs. Maybe bring our hands to our thighs as we push the ground away with those feet and slowly come back upright. Uh, shake it out if you need to. So we're going to try those step backs again and then once we're in one of those lunges we'll try some movement there. We're going to add that twist again because we seem to be twisting a lot today. So we're at the front of our mat, nice soft knees. We'll lift the right heel, step the right foot back. So if you feel like you're on a tight rope, take that left foot to the left a smidgen, nice wide base. Back heel is lifted, we're going to bend the back knee so it's just almost under the hip. There's a bit of strength here in the glute, yeah. Hands could be on your hips, so out to the sides for balance, or even holding onto a chair or a wall. Let's straighten both legs, yeah, and that back heel stays lifted, we've got a stretch here. We're going to bend both knees. And this is challenging. This is definitely a set of challenging standing poses. Very stretchy to that back thigh. And very challenging for the legs. So we'll do two more here. Keeping that pelvis upright. I feel that strong glute and that strong belly. Find a middle place, we're going to step forward again. So take it slow, stretch to mountain. Let's stand in mountain for a moment. Maybe even hands to the belly here as we let the inhale deepen. And the exhale lengthen.
Okay, we're gonna do this again on the other side. Soft knees, lift the left heel, and step back. So if you feel like you're on a tightrope, you could take the right foot to the right a smidgen. And bend the back knee just under the hip. So hands could be on your hips, sometimes that helps you find that neutral upright pelvis. Out to the sides for balance or for a wall or chair. Straightening both legs. And bending both knees. This could be a tiny bit of movement, especially if balance is an issue here. You've got your gaze point in front of you. So moving nice and slow. We'll do three more here. Root those feet. We'll squeeze to the left bum. Be nice and upright. And more. And then as we find that middle place, let's shift the weight forward, step forward. And back to standing. Maybe hands to the belly, let everything settle. Settle the breath, the body. Great. So as you open your eyes, we're going to do one more variation here in lunge, and we're going to add a little twist. Yeah. So again, balance, support your balance any way you need to, and we'll play with this. So nice soft knees. We're stepping the right foot back. As we get the weight on both feet, let's bend the back knee a little bit and get nice and upright. So we're kind of in the power of the pose here. We're not at the top, we're not at the bottom. We're gonna bring the arms out in front if possible. Yeah. We'll float the right arm out to the side. And then we'll turn the belly and chest towards the right. Maybe put the foot down on a diagonal. Uh, warrior two. Yeah. Not a twist, more of an opening. We're going to find the back hand. We're going to bring it back to the front. And we're going to have to pivot on the ball of that back foot a little bit. Just if you need to. And this is where the twist comes in. So now the left arm is going to come out to the left. We're going to reach both arms away from each other as we turn the chest to the left side. So I've turned away from you. And then we'll come back. And I know those are kind of challenging poses there. I get it. We're going to try once more either side. We're in the power of it. I'm going to bring the right arm out to the side. As we reach it, I'm going to bring that foot down. Maybe palms down. There's our warrior pose. We just got there from lunch. And then the hand sweeps back. We're pivoting on the ball of that back foot. Find our way back to our warrior. Yeah, beautiful pose here. Once more that twist. And the twist feels resistant here because the hips remain square to the front. So you'll notice we don't twist as far as we might have earlier in the practice. So the left arm comes out to the side. And we turn the chest to the back wall as we reach those arms away from each other. One more breath here. And then bring the back hand to meet the front. Maybe out to the sides for balance. As we shift the weight forward, we step forward. And let's come back to our mountain. We might feel the beating of our own heart, the strength of our breath here. Now offering a few breaths to settle. When you feel ready, we are going to do it again on the other side. So nice soft knees here. We're lifting the left heel, stepping back. We're finding our upright lunge. Reaching those arms in front. So the left arm sweeps out to the side. As it reaches behind us, we're pivoting on the ball of that back foot. Palms down, there's our warrior. You can see the warrior from behind. Find the back hand, we're gonna sweep it forward, pivot on the ball of that back foot, I know that's the fancy move. And we're back 
to our lunge. So you can adjust if you need to. And this is our twist. We're going to sweep the right arm out to the side. We're going to reach it behind us, turning the chest to the side wall. So you'll notice there's not a lot of rotation here because the hips aren't going anywhere. So we're finding rotation through the ribs. And back hand floats to the front. I'm going to try this once more either side. Remember, everything's optional here. Float the left arm to the left. As it reaches behind, we pivot on the ball of the foot. We find our warrior two. Sweep the back arm to meet the front. We're pivoting on the ball of the foot. Find it. Right arm to the right. I'm going to reach it behind. We're reaching those arms away from each other. Can we turn the chest to the side? And then back. Now let's shift the weight forward. Step forward. Release the arm. Off shoulder. So let's come back to our forward fold if you so choose. Again, options here. Walk the hands down the thighs, rest the forearms. Great place to find the breath to slow everything down. If you would like to rest the belly on the thighs, we're keeping the knees bent, letting the head hang. Nod your head yes. Turn your head no. Give yourself a wiggle. Now let go of what you can here, a couple more breaths. Now walking your forearms to your thighs, getting your hands on your thighs, push the floor away as you come to standing. Shoulders lift and roll back and down. Yeah, so we have, one, we have time for one more set of poses before final relaxation, and we will find those poses from seated. So take your time getting onto the floor. We're going to sit with our legs out in front. And let's lean into the hands, invite the knees wide. Uh, you could be on forearms here if it feels better, though once we add our twist, you might want to get onto those hands again. So knees are going to fall to one side and then the other, just like we did from reclined at the start of the practice. So let's add our familiar twist. So if the knees are falling to the right, we're sweeping that left arm around behind a little extra reach here. And slowly back to the other side. Knees fall to the left. We'll sweep the right arm around. And reach. And back. So I'm going to add a variation to this. You could keep going side to side with the reaching. That really speaks to some folks. Um, or you could go into this extended version for the shoulder. So just bear with me here. You're going to have to keep an eye on me maybe at first, but I'm going to give really clear instruction, I hope. So knees are falling to the right. We'll sweep that left arm around, so no big surprises here. Now, as you reach through the left hand, I'm going to ask you to bring the left hand down for a moment as we come on to the right forearm. Okay, so we're pressing down through the forearm. Locate your left leg. It's that one that's on top. I'm going to walk it behind you just a little bit if that's comfortable. It just gets a little more stretch through the thigh. Okay, so return towards that right forearm. We're going to reach that left arm beyond it. We're going to sweep it up, around and behind. So you can turn your chest to the ceiling, reach the arm behind. It's going to cross the body and then circle back to the right hand. So again, turning chest to the floor and then continuing that circle. So again, we're kind of twisting in either direction, much like what we did on hands and knees. We're pressing down through that bottom forearm so that shoulder stays nice and spacious and flexible. And maybe we can change direction of that circle. So once you're reaching by the right hand, we could 
Sweep the arm down and across the body. Reach behind, turn to the ceiling. And back to facing the floor. We'll do that two more times. Wonderful. So you're going to bring that hand beside the right hand. Get the right hand under you and come up. We'll come back to center. So let's lean into those hands again. Rock the knees. And let's do it all again on the other side. So we'll meet at center. The knees will fall to the left. We'll sweep the right arm around behind us. Let's put the right hand down for a moment so we can come on to the left forearm. At the same time, we'll locate the right leg, the top leg, and just walk it behind us a little bit if you so choose. It just helps you find the stretch. Now we're reaching that right arm long beyond the left, reaching behind, sweeping up, returning chest to the ceiling as you reach the arm behind, and continuing that journey. chest to the ceiling, carving out that space, and then kind of turning chest down towards that left forearm, and continuing the circle one more time in this direction. And then we'll change direction, reach behind, Remember, we're pressing down through that lower forearm, so we feel some stability in that bottom shoulder. Lots of space to move. One more circle here. Great, now we can walk our hand beside the other one, press into it to get the other hand under us, and we'll come back to center. So it is time for final relaxation now. If there are any other poses or stretches you need to do to complete your practice, feel free to press pause and move freely for as long as you choose. If you are ready for final relaxation, you might need a sweater or a blanket. Again, you can press pause to gather what you need. I'm going to suggest that same way that we laid down last time with the feet wide and the knees resting together, or the legs resting long. You can turn the palms up, arms away from the body, or rest the hands on the belly. Closing your eyes, breathing through your nose. Tuning in to the movement of your own breath, soft and deep. Soft and slow. Now let's imagine the breath has an invitation for us. Each inhale is inviting us to reach our awareness all the way to our toe tips, our fingertips, the crown of our head. Each exhale is inviting us to return our awareness to center, to whatever your center is to you. Inhale, reach our awareness all the way out to our edges, to the toes, the fingers, the crown of the head. 
Exhale, return that awareness to your own center. And just play with that, inhaling, expanding awareness. Exhale, returning to your own center. So stay with the invitation of the breath. If your mind begins to wander, that's okay. That's what minds do. So come back to the breath, the invitation of the breath. Inhale, reach your awareness out to your toe tips, your fingertips, the crown of your head. Exhale, return your awareness to center, whatever that means to you. Let's offer five or six more breaths to this pose. Each exhale a little longer than the last. If you feel a deep need to remain right where you are, please feel free. If you'd like to invite some movement, maybe it's the fingers or toes, wrists or ankles. A slow turn of your head, a yawn, a stretch. Eventually you could bend your knees and roll Perhaps over to your right side, rest your head on your arm.
and gently pressing your top hand into the floor to bring you up. If it suits you, resting hand to the belly, hand to the chest. Tuning in to your own giving hands and offering yourself some sweetness here. A kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. slowly releasing those hands, opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.